The Hypnotic Hiker presents Hypnotic Trip, a virtual mind trip experience, a series of guided journeys that take you back to your true self. In these episodes, you'll discover the power of your subconscious mind and how to easily change any old outdated programs from birth that have kept you stuck. You'll enjoy some virtual hikes, plus I'll share the divine interventions that I've encountered on my hikes and how I put those into my spiritual practice. You'll learn walking meditation and self-hypnosis. By the way, I've been a clinical hypnotist in Dallas since 2002. In addition, we'll explore the importance of staying connected to that wild child within you and in touch with your primitive instincts. We'll talk about how the modern world has tried to change us into the cogs of a machine. I'll dive into mass hypnosis and the concept of transhumanism. We will even explore regenerative ranching and agriculture via a virtual tour of my homestead that is based loosely on the concept of permaculture. But the most important discovery you'll have is how to lose that shadow self and to love yourself again to stand on your own two feet and think from your heart mind and speak with your true voice. You'll gain the freedom to be your absolute best self. I'm Valerie, the hypnotic hiker. So are you ready for a new relationship with you? We can do that and it begins in nature. Come along with me now. This is the Hypnotic Hiker. Welcome to episode 19. Nature is my drug of choice. Um, Because I love its mind-altering effects. So what do I mean by mind-altering? Well, shifting of ideas, rearranging of thoughts, new ways to see things, new inspirations, and all these answers are always within us. But they're kind of hard to get to. Nature really helps us get um, in touch with this creativity within. And sometimes on on a hike, sometimes when you're out on a walk, um, you can gain the insights that you want right then. Sometimes it happens later. Sometimes it happens, you're not even aware that it's happening. But it always happens. When we go out in nature, something gets shifted. Some kind of thought, idea gets a shift, a new perspective. I like to start my hikes out with a question um, because I've been studying along with Donna Brown, Access Consciousness, and the subconscious mind loves to answer questions. Like if I said, what color was your bicycle when you were in first grade? Maybe the response would be, well, I didn't have a bicycle till third grade, or, oh, it was green, or whatever. You know, you're going to search and find as the subconscious kind of shifts through and and looks for that answer. So when we ask, ask a question, the subconscious will find that. And sometimes, like I said, it comes to us then, maybe, you know, later next week, but we do come to some kind of a conclusion and John Muir has a quote that, I, that really makes a lot of sense with this. His quote is, In every walk with nature, man receives far more than he seeks. So that happened to me, and I'm not sure where, why, or how this came about. Um, I don't remember what question I asked myself starting off on my hike. Um, but what I do remember is quite... Uh, quite um, remarkably, um, was that I was sitting in a meditation uh, maybe a couple months ago. I'm recording this October 24th, 2023, so it was still still in the summer, still hot. Um, and I started this rant in my head, talking to myself. Val, I said, you have worked so hard. You have worked really, really hard for a long time now. Let's just see how hard that was or how hard it's been. 
That's right, you've worked really hard and tried so many different things for the past couple of decades. And those past couple of decades have been something like this. Work hard, try hard, work harder, try harder, try something new, try that new thing harder. Let the universe bring it to you. Wait patiently until impatience interrupts. Interrupts your faith in yourself and the universe and all that is. And then you say to yourself, I don't need any help. I can do this myself. So then I would rephrase my desires and wants, start over again until you are just sick, sick of trying. But still try something else, a new technique, a new thought. Meanwhile, work, 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 try, 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 hope, 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 maybe pray, maybe not. It was 1980. At 18 years old, my dad said, come to work for me in the ad agency. And at this ad agency, there was a lot of work that needed to be done. So I did. I will work, work, work to make it a better agency. And I did that. And now I can buy that agency from my dad while he retires and I can work, work, work and work and work and work and work, but to, but forget to clean up all the blood, the sweat and the tears. And then you kind of get spun out and I spun out. <laughs> I did. I spun out and the rug got pulled out from under me and I landed at the Dallas Hypnosis Training Institute and it was around 1999 or 2000 when that happened. And I remember the director of the Dallas Hypnosis Institute telling me that I looked like I was having a hard time holding it all together. What? Yeah. Hypnosis helped me. I went to some sessions, it helped, and I became a hypnotist. And then I worked really hard at that, worked, 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 tried, 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 tried another tactic, another program, another advertising strategy. I renamed myself, rebranded myself, moved locations, opened multiple locations, created a new website, created another website, did networking, created new networking commercials, lots of those and lots of one-on-ones, and then I spun out from that. I would stop, and then a week later I'd start again and make 52 YouTube videos, one a week for a whole year. And I did that before anyone was really doing that, and I stopped the year before I should have and started doing something else just as everyone else started doing that. So then I became very jealous of other people's YouTube successes. And I would say to myself, well, I did that five years ago. I did that 20 years ago, whatever. So then I'd rest and become impatient and let God and then say, no, I can do this. 20 years have passed. And I'm still trying and trying and trying and working and working and creating and uncreating and creating. I can do it this way. I need to change my sales tactics. But I'm not really a salesy person. I don't want to be salesy. I'll distrust the universe. No, I'll hire professionals and I'll spend thousands of dollars. Nothing helped. No improvement. So I'll just trust myself. I'll trust myself. I'll trust myself. But that hasn't worked. What else can I do? What else is there to do? What else can I try? What else can I do? 2023. The book, The Lost Teachings of Jesus, fell off the shelf, as they say. I had seen this book off and on for the last 10 years. I don't even remember where I got this book, who gave it to me. But there's an illustration in it of what the author is depicting our God selves are like. So there's this pillar of light with the Godhead at the top, the Christ in the middle, and the human with the Christ at the center heart with the three flame, three flames of wisdom, power, and love. And again, I've seen this off and on for about 10 years, and I would focus on that illustration and here it is 2023 age 61 when it finally hit me the answer maybe I was asking the question on that hike what would it take for me to really stop having to try so hard and then I realized what's been missing allowing see that tube of light has this silver cord that runs from the Godhead 
through the Christ consciousness into our hearts. And it's this tube of light that is on every one of us. And so what, that's, what that means, interpretation of that is that, that we have that divine intervention, that we, that it's all there, it's all there, and there's nothing we have to do. We don't have to try. Yes, we don't sit around and just expect stuff to knock at the door. Um, you get out there and you, you put the effort in, you have a great idea and you follow through on it. But allowing, I was asking but not allowing. So after 22 years as a hypnotist, I still barely make enough to pay my bills. Yet I own a home, I have a small farm, and a great family and health. But all this time I've been comparing myself too much with others. Money has never been my motivator, but yet it was the entire focus of my career. Allowing is all I really needed to do. But not allowing negatives in, I wasn't allowing the money in. Because when you put up boundaries, you try to keep certain things out, you're keeping everything out. We have to allow everything in, as Dr. Dane with Access Consciousness talks about. And I'll put the link to his video, which, interestingly enough, after I had this realization, that was the video that came up in my YouTube feed, and it was all about allowing um, isn't that wonderful how that works? So that pillar of light that I was referring to um, represents the all power, the all love, and the all wisdom of the great I am. And it is in us. So there is no thing that we need to do to receive it. So I decided to just allow to relax and allow. And the next thing I said to myself, after all of that work, and on the 61st year, she rested. So it was my intention to maybe stir some thoughts in your own mind to maybe help you in some way not to feel like you've got to effort too much and to just allow what you're asking for to come to you because it's already right there but our limiting beliefs or our avoidance or defense of something keeps it away from us so Hiking is how I get these revelations, how I sift and shift and sort out what I need to, to know to gain clarity, information, divine inspiration. And on the 61st year, she rested. And so I'm probably not going to do another podcast this year. I want to. So if I just feel moved, I'll do one. Otherwise, I think I'll just let that rest too. Thank you for listening. This is Valerie, the Hypnotic Hiker.